Time to check in with Australia's best-known naturopath, author of Get Well and the Golden Years. You can grab that at russellsetrite.com. Hello, Russell. Hello, Luke. How how are you this morning? I am travelling very well, mate, as I hope you are. I am too. Um, I hope you're wearing your mask out there in the public and inside uh, closed doors. Indeed I am. You you don't have to wear it in the bedroom. You you know that, don't you? Yeah, I've worked that out and... Because for some reason we're considered uh, in the media to be essential workers, uh, because the mask prevents me from properly enunciating, I'm entitled to work sans mask. In other words, I can sit here without a mask on. People are probably yes. saying oh, I can't tell the difference, but um, <laughs> nonetheless, that's uh, that's the way things work here. But uh, we were talking a little off air there about how people are measuring up, and you've got a great story about... QR codes. Well, it's not a great story. It highlights exactly where we are in all of this. You're right. Look, um, in a rural setting, but uh, so just outside of the major metropolitan area of Sydney, but still under the restrictions that anybody going into a restaurant or hotel or a club, they must um, scan in with their QR code. They must wear a mask. They can take the mask off while they're eating and they must be seated, not standing. Mm. So... I had lunch at a restaurant and um, watched people walk in. And as these people walk in, no one was scanning in. The, the QR codes were there for them to do it, but the, the restaurant wasn't asking anyone to do it. And so I, I said, look, hey, um, you better ask people to scan in. I said, because we're all coming in here. We take our masks off to eat. That means everyone's exposed. And if someone did have something, they can't track them. It's very important we all toe the line this, this way. Hmm. And they just said, oh, well, no, they're supposed to go in, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. I actually rang up um, and uh, dropped it in just to, uh, you know, that this is not a good thing. They need to say something about it. Good. And they really didn't care. You know, they just said, oh, well. Not good. Um, but, but, you know, it's we've all got to do our bit. We really do. Yeah. And the way this is spreading is by contact, either breathing in what's in the air from people that have got it. Yeah. So if you don't breathe it in, you're not going to get it. And if it doesn't spread that way and drops to the ground, then there's a less chance and we can get on top of it in this lockdown situation. So it's very important that you use those QR codes to scan in because then it can be traced very quickly and they can lock it up. And imagine if everything goes in, the whole state goes into lockdown again. Uh, we don't want that. And we all got to try to do the best we can. So wear your masks uh, where you can. Um, wear them when you go into a club. You won't be able to get into a club, but these restaurants are just, you know, that means that someone actually has to watch and and pay attention rather than just serve, and they're not doing that, and I just don't think that's fair Mm -hmm. to everyone. So let's hope they take a listen to this one. Yeah, indeed. Well, I've got to say I've, um, uh, and even before this uh, recent um, lockdown, if you want to call it that, uh, I went to a couple of places in regional New South Wales for a coffee, and they insisted they see that I'd, I'd checked in. So... Some are doing it, but not all. I think it's a very good point you you make, and we've got to keep uh, all of us, as the Premier and others have said, all of us own the solution. So if you see someone doing the wrong thing, it's uh, it's not dobbing. It's actually keeping all of us safe. So well done, you. Yeah. Let's get down to eating fruits with lunch, vegetables yeah. at dinner, and a dairy snack in the evening. Uh, is this still a thing, or was it a thing? Well, they looked at uh, people who do this compared to people who ate the average Western lunch, which is uh, refined grains like white bread, cheese and cured meats, as we know. You know, ham on on a white bread sandwich is that. And that increased the risk of all-cause death in this follow-up and this study by the American Heart Foundation uh, Association of Men. Compared to people who are eating fruit with lunch... Vegetables with dinner, uh, the dairy snack at night, I'm not sure what that was, whether it was a hot toddy or something, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, uh, I don't have a dairy snack at night. But anyway, that'd be, that'd be that the ice, mate, that'd be the ice cream, wouldn't it? Oh, well, that'd be nice, but I'm surely not. But anyhow, um, that's what they found. That reduced the incidence um, or the, the all-cause death, and particularly heart disease, but all-cause death. So by doing that, you're going to reduce the risk of dying early 
by eating the average Western diet, and really that's a ham and cheese sandwich, isn't it? Yeah. White, white um, processed grains, cheese and cured meat, that's a ham and cheese sandwich, increases your risk of dying early. A bit, bit of a message in that one, I think, isn't it? I reckon you're right, and we all turn to that, don't we? Gee, that's uh, that's extraordinary. Diet and pain. A typical Western high-fat diet can increase the risk of painful disorders common in people with conditions such as diabetes and or ob- uh, obesity. Yeah. Well, this makes sense because people are eating the uh, typical Western diet. Here we go again with the typical Western diet, but... We've got to realise that it's very high in what's called omega-6 fatty acids. Now, these omega-6 fatty acids are pro-inflammation, so they increase inflammation and make arthritis a bit worse, made all inflammation worse, which is, of course, a contributing factor then to pain. Uh, Whereas omega-3 fatty acids, and this study, I couldn't fit it all in the Twitters, but that's what's in it as well, reduces, and that's what in fish oil, reduces the incidence of inflammation and therefore reduces the amount of neurotic pain. Um, And uh, so nerve pain as well as arthritic pain all are reduced with the omega-3 rich diet. So it's something we've got to change. Now, for instance, canola oils are omega-6 and you would think that they may be an increasing the um, risk of suffering a bit more pain. Um, I've never been a, a favour of canola oil. I like uh, olive oil. And if we flick those two studies together, here we go again, back to the Mediterranean diet, aren't we? <laughs> we end up there a lot, don't we? <laughs> we end up there a lot. But, you know, when we look at it, longevity, uh, less cancer, less heart disease, less uh, Alzheimer's, um, you know, I think uh, we've got to do it. Yeah. And, of course, that one is more fruit and veggies with their dinner and uh, they they must enjoy that uh, dairy snack, which I've got to find out what that is. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <laughs> because I just said dairy snack, and that leaves it very open. It, it does for a lot of things, doesn't it? Well, yeah. I, look, I, I'm punching the air here, thinking ice cream, but uh, I'm sure <laughs> at some point you'll set me you'll set me right there. Just for those who aren't particularly aware of the Mediterranean diet, what are the key features of it? Well, the key features are they have meat, red meat, but it's lean, very lean red meat, and it's not a large portion of their diet. They have more fish in their diet, and they eat lots of fruit, veggies, and nuts, and whole grains. So fruit, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, little less uh, red meat, but certainly not overcooked. They, They don't have a lot of processed meats. They don't have a lot of processed foods. And even though some of their foods are fatty, we look at the French paradox where they have a low incidence of heart disease, but they have a lot of cream. So, you know, if you balance that with good fresh foods mm. and not a lot of processed foods, mm. then uh, you're going to live longer, and, and the evidence is very strong on this one, and you're going to have less disease. So that's one of the reasons you live longer, because you get less disease. But yeah, of course. you're going to keep your memory a bit longer as well. So yeah. I think it's yeah. very important. Yeah, indeed. High blood pressure in children. I, I can't imagine yeah. that we have kids with high blood pressure, but this is obviously a thing. Yeah, I was kind of looking and saying, that really, it's not something you run around and check with your kids, but yeah. those that are predisposed to blood pressure later in life, um, there are kids that do get that, and they've done this study. And what they were looking at in this was minerals toxic that can be toxic, like cadmium, which is a toxic mineral and doesn't have any benefits in the body at all. So looking at all of these minerals, as selenium and magnesium and cadmium, in the diets and seeing what was good and bad, and they found that if mothers had a higher level of manganese and selenium within the parameters of what they should have uh, during pregnancy, that their, their kids had a lower risk of developing blood pressure. Mm. And um, I thought, well, that's that's a pretty good thing. We know selenium in Australia and New Zealand is low and uh, we've got to try and get those levels up a bit. Supplementation is probably a good idea, but like with all minerals, make sure you follow the directions, talk to your healthcare professional, always read the labels because iron is fantastic and it's needed by a lot of women, Um, but if you triple a dose and think that's going to be better, then it can be toxic. So always follow the directions of your healthcare professional and naturally Talk to you, your healthcare professional about supplements like a need for iron or selenium. But if you read the label, that's approved by the therapeutic goods as being levels 
and it will tell you don't take more than this amount mm. and you can work it out. But we are low in these minerals in Australia and that may, may be something we need to look at closely because this is a pretty good study. Yeah, and uh, only in the last week or so was it released. Just uh, g- given the fact that we're in you know, this, uh, this lockdown in New South Wales and there are concerns obviously in Queensland and elsewhere, uh, you yeah. and I have forever talked about well, the smart thing to do is to get your immune system in as good as uh, as good a shape as you possibly might. Now, during these hours, it, it occurred to me the other day, Russell. I I'm at work during the night. I then yeah. go home and I go straight Sleep. to bed. So I'm in inside during the day, and then I wake up, have a shower, and if I'm lucky, there's half an hour of daylight. But there's generally not. So I'm getting I'm getting absolutely zero vitamin D from the sun. Now you and I have spoken about supplementing with vitamin D if you're operating like that, but there's there's other things. If if we wanted to get our body in as best shape as it might be in terms of our immune system uh, coming into a season like this, what what are the essentials we get either through diet or by supplementation? Right. Look, it's very important with vitamin D, particularly going into winter. Um, You know, because we're going to get less. The older you are, the less likely you are to have right levels of vitamin D. Now, I I was taking vitamin D, and and like you, I don't get uh, a lot of sun, um, but I but I get more than the average. And my last test on vitamin D was a bit low, Um, so I've had to up my supplement to get it up that way. So, you know, if you're just taking one a day, maybe you need to always once a year get it checked, see your doctor, and say. Let's see where my vitamin D levels are, yeah. and they should be around 75 nanomoles per litre. Just remember the figure of 75 is a good one to be. If it's close to 50, it's too low. If it's up around 120, it's too high. So you really need to do that because that does help the immune system function better, and the evidence is rock solid on that. Um, you know, So I think it's very important to get that level up. Talk to your healthcare professional about that as well. But just thinking, if you're just taking one a day, it mightn't be enough, particularly when we look at what you're doing and you're not getting any sun at all, yeah. that one a day is probably not going to build it up. So do get that checked at least once a year. And if you find it slow, well, you need to get that dosage up. And uh, that's a very important thing. Now, the other thing is getting the amount of vitamin C, which isn't a lot. And I was surprised to find that about 20% of Australians don't get the minimum amounts of vitamin C to to stop scurvy, you know, about 100 milligrams a day, Jeez. which is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. they're not even eating a piece of fruit a day. Um, and, of course, if you start cooking your veggies, which is, most people do, that destroys the vitamin C in them. So you're not getting that uh, amount out of that. So it, I think vitamin C is something that's, you know, if you're lacking in that diet, then supplementing can be a good idea as well to build that up. So there are two nutrients that are vitally important. Also for the immune system, we talked about omega-3 fatty acids from fish. Again, we don't eat enough fish in Australia to give us the amount that we're supposed to have. It's an essential omega-3 fatty acid. So that means we must get it from our diet. We can't make it in our bodies. And if we're not eating fish, um, then uh, linseed oil is another source of it. But it's, it's slightly different. The omega-3 fatty acid out of fish is the best omega-3, the one that the studies have done on. So, you know, three fish meals a week is a good idea, and oily fish is the best to have. If you're not doing that, consider supplementation to give you that level of omega-3 that uh, most experts recommend that you have, which is about 1,000 milligrams a day. And what about zinc? Is it important? Absolutely. (laughs) Zinc is... Without the right minerals, then the vitamins can't work. So they're like a key and a lock, if you like. So zinc is a very, very important. It's responsible for the activation of around 200 different enzymes in the body. That's how important it is. And uh, very important for the immune system as well. And, of course, I've written about all these in the book and given the, the medical reference to these as well. Yes. And getting your zinc levels, we're not, we don't, we're not talking about overdosing. We're talking about just building it up to what the recommended level that the experts, and, the, and I'm a bit worried about this expert statement now. Huh. Um, there's so many experts around with all different opinions in Australia that I'm a bit concerned. Yeah. But anyhow... Um, which all the regulators and the put down you should be getting because 
there's evidence to say that many Australians are not getting their levels of zinc out of their diet that they need for good health. So that's around about 12.5 milligrams of um, uh, zinc a day that we need. So if you're not doing that and you sit down and want to count it all up, then maybe supplementation to get that level up to what it should be is a good idea as well, yeah. particularly coming into winter, particularly with the immune system being so vitally important at this point of time. And, of course, it's not a replacement for social distancing, cleansing the hands or immunisation or whatever. But if you, if you haven't got your immune system functioning properly, then you're, you're facing a downhill path. Of course. Russell's book, Get Well on the Golden Years, available from his website. It's russellsetrite.com. And for the um, the updates, you make sure you follow Russell on Twitter. Simple as that. Great to talk to you, my friend. Stay well. Catch you again soon. All the very best. Have a very healthy and happy time, everybody, during this very difficult time. Let's hope it gets over soon. Play the game strongly.